I think we're ready. Hello, everybody. I'm Eugene Brown. Welcome back to another Monday night Convene Communities Networking call. In this call, we're going to be introducing, well, better said, interviewing Josh Griffith, who is a influencer, uh, mainly on TikTok, has about 500,000 followers and about 2.7 million views. Josh, how are you, sir? Good evening. I'm good. How are you? Better than I should be. Yeah, me Better too. Than I... <laughs> me too. So, Josh, you have been at this uh, TikToking, uh, influencing game, if you will, for quite yeah. some time. Tell us a little bit about uh, what has brought you th to this point. There are so many people who are trying to do what you were doing. So, uh, clue us in a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the journey. Yeah, I've, um, I've been at the TikTok world for a little over three years. So I started about three years ago during COVID, uh, really to make fun of uh, my kids, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, my ex-wife and I started it and, uh, we, you know, making videos and all of a sudden got some traction. And uh, yeah, I've continued uh, doing that uh, through COVID, through all of this uh, uh, craziness, I guess, that we've we've gone through the last three years. And uh Kind of made a switch here back in April to um, to talk men's mental health, to talk relationships, to talk life, to kind of you know do this you know do the solo thing, and uh, you know had a good meeting with Matt um, and um, said, hey, let's uh, let's jump on over to convene, and I think is a perfect fit for uh, kind of what uh, you know another another stepping stone I think to um, moving it from the you know the fun uh, you know, short clip TikTok world to, to something a little bit more serious, to something a little more uh, tangible that can help, uh, people long-term and, uh, hopefully help even more people than, um, than what TikTok does. Yeah. So before we get to the convene platform that you're transitioning mm -hmm. to, yep. not, you obviously are not going to leave the TikTok world. What other platforms are you on? Yeah, so the TikTok world, obviously, I'm on. I'm not going to leave that. That's a, uh, you know, that's the fun, exciting, um, playful, um, you know, dancing, all of that world that uh, some of us know and love. I'm also on Instagram as well. Um, I like to share a lot of stories of uh, in the, the Instagram stories of, you know, my food, where I'm at, tagging certain people, uh, certain organizations in there. I think that, you um, you know, once you get to a certain point as a quote unquote influencer or someone that has a following, everybody kind of wants to keep up with your life, whether that's creepy or whether that's a good thing. I think people want to, you know, want to know what you're doing. So I have learned that I delay posts <laughs> sometimes so just in case uh, somebody doesn't show up where I am. But I love the I love the story aspect of it. I should share a lot of, um, you know, a lot of scriptures. I'm a huge Toby Mac fan. Uh, I share a lot of the Speak Life stuff from Toby Mac. I share a lot of my food uh, that I'm either making or eating, um, you know, and, and certain things I can share throughout the, out the day that's, uh, you know, quick hits to people so that they can kind of see, you know, kind of what I'm up to, what I'm, what's going on or kind of what's on my heart. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not just a, a, a casual thing. I see you on TikTok all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, and you'll be doing lives and I'll jump on there from time to time and say, hi, yep. this is a part-time job. If yeah. You know. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it has become a, a part-time job side hustle, if you will, but takes more than side hustle time. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. It's, uh, you know, I enjoy the live. One of the things that, um, I think sets me apart from, other creators is that I actually interact with people and that's no knock on creators in general once you get to a certain point it's very very hard to interact on the level that I do you know I I tend to like every comment sometimes I will I will comment back if it's you know if it's funny or it kind of catches me a little off guard or any of that but you know the lives are my way to um really interact with people live, you know, at a, at a certain, at a certain time of the day, they can, you know, throw chats in there, throw conversations in there. And I'm, you know, there I am on, on, on display, if you will, for whoever's in the room. Um, 
And I like that. I think that's, uh, you know, one of the things that you had mentioned when we first met was, hey, you know, your TikToks are there and you don't say anything. Right. I got a lot to say on live. <laughs> I, you know, I can't hide behind any of that stuff on the live. So, you know, I think there's a you're not the first person to say that. And where I like that piece of it, you know, I use all of that stuff in my life to to speak and kind of gives me a, a more of a you know, a broader range of things to talk about. And it's obviously longer, um, you know, than the standard 15 seconds or 30 seconds of the, of the video. Okay. So everybody wants to be an influencer, quite honestly, because you, you have an opportunity in theory to be able to uh, take some of those followers and convert them into something uh, that's more than that, a relationship, and then hopefully longer term, uh, a way to monetize uh, that following. So talk about maybe how many videos you create throughout the week, and what really has proved to be the difference? You know, how, how is it that one goes to 500,000 followers? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the easy answer is, is repetition. I mm -hmm. think, I mean, the more you're, the more you're out there and the more you're in front of people, the more it starts, you know, traction. Hey, this is, this is, this is a good video. I, I like him or I like her, or that made sense. Um, and I think, um, you know, the sound on TikTok is a big thing. So is it, is it a catchy sound? Is it a catchy song? Uh, the hashtags are another thing that, uh, kind of propel it. Um, those are the those are the answers that everybody tells us. I think a lot of it is just right place, right time. Um, you know, I have a couple that are well over a million. I've got one that's at, you know, 4.4 million that just, you know, it's my buddy walking down the aisle on a, you know, airplane. on the airplane. And I just, it's basically me. I'm an I'm an Apple, Apple guy. He's an Android guy. And those seem to spark a debate, which is more interaction, which is more views, which is more all of that. And I said it with the new Taylor Swift song. It's, you know, hi, I'm the problem. It's me. And I'm basically making fun of him because he's an Android user and we're not the problem as Apple users. And that just caught on as, as craziness. The, the, uh, the scientific, the mechanics, I mean, people dissecting an Android phone and dissecting an Apple phone on there. I'm like, people, I really don't care. I just want to make fun of my friend and you guys have blown it up. So I think it's it just it gets into people's uh, mind and then everybody starts to share it. And it's just grassroots, you know, just a you know, fire that, that can easily, easily take off. Um, but I would say repetition. I mean, I do. I generally post three, sometimes four videos a day. Um, I have a bank right now. You know, they're in the draft status. I think I have 50 couple that are in there. A lot of those are old. A lot of those are from June, July. So one of the things I always tell, you know, on my live, I'm not an emotional poster, if that makes sense. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm so mad at my my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my parents. I'm just going to post like I, I literally post. I'm angry and whatever. I'm an emotional creator. So if I'm having a bad day, you know, our phones know what is going on. So I'm getting all of the you know, the sad songs and the sad quotes. So I will, I will create in the stage there and then I will post later on. So I'm not an emotional poster where, where I post is exactly what I'm going through now. Um, but that's why the drafts are there. So. So you've got something like, uh, like many people waiting on standby. Um, it has been well documented. I would say that there are lots of influencers who have struggled to make it financially. And without going into any of those details, you know, we can look up what TikTokers make per 1,000 views or 1 million followers. I think it's something to the effect you have to have 10,000 followers, 100,000 views or something crazy over a 30-day period. But it seems as though you know, YouTube pays more than TikTok. I'm not quite sure if that's the case, but what what's your take on how some of these platforms are paying? Yeah, I think they're all, um, you know, they're all trying to get into that game of who can put the content on their, on their platform. Um, you know, for me, honestly, like I, I make more from Instagram than I make for TikTok. Okay. Monetarily goes. Um, 
but TikTok is where, you know, a lot of things you talk about, monet- you know, monetizing it, you know, there's sponsorships, there's ads, there's all those other things too. So, you know, I'll get, you know, messages from companies to say, hey, we'll send you, I just actually got two last night, uh, a jewelry brand in France and a watch brand in some other country. It says, hey, we'll send you three free pieces every single month. You just have to tag us in a post um, and we'll send them to you for free. And then um, here's a coupon code that you can put on there. And if anybody buys it, you get a portion. So there's other ways than just views for people to make make money. So if you guys see me with a, you know, a women's diamond necklace on, that's that's I didn't buy that for myself. They made that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So but there's there's views, there's sponsorships, there's ads, um, and obviously you know TikTok. There's a creator fund, so obviously is that money's in there from advertisements and things like that, and everybody's everybody's splitting that fund based on views. That's how you get it paid for. Right. So the big money with social media comes in the form of brand partnerships. Correct. And I, I've seen lots of people who promote other people's products, but they're getting payments for them, not coupon codes or anything else. Uh, Have you had any of those offers yet? Or do you need to reach a certain level before you think that will happen? Or I I think very quickly, do you need to reach out to them to see if you can get a partnership? Yeah, I think I, um, you know, I do a lot of that stuff on my own too. I mean, there's certain clothes that I buy, you know, the art of homage is a Christian apparel brand. I buy their stuff. I love their stuff. So I usually tag them in my, in my things. That's not paid ad. That's just, you know, one of, I want to give them some publicity, but two, it's like, okay, look at him. Maybe we'll send him another hoodie. Um, But I think I don't, I don't do that reaching out. I think that, you know, blessed enough to obviously have my own business and blessed obviously with convene. Not, I don't, per se not out to do it for the money i really enjoy it's nice obviously um but i think people reach out to you at a certain point once they see certain content um yeah i don't know i i, I think the more once i hit that five hundred thousand threshold i think there'll be more of that coming and then you have a million and two you know i have a friend that has she's a five million i mean this is what she does full time now her ads and things like that i'm sure pay for you know she makes tons of money She's also getting, you know, she's 10 times the amount of followers I have, which means 10 times the revenue and more people buying. It's just that numbers game. Um, But no, I haven't reached out to to people to do that. I think, you know, for for me, that's kind of like, hey, let me promote myself and you, you you need me type of thing as opposed to them saying, hey, we like your content. Hey, we would love to have you like, well, what, what could, how can we work together? How can we partner type of thing? But that's just me. Not everybody looks at it like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, so tell us about Convene. What, what, what's the allure for you? How do you expect to use it given what you're doing? Yeah, I think um, for me, for Convene, I've, um, you know, the since, you know, it's almost been a year where I've kind of done this TikTok thing and Instagram thing solo. And I've talked everything from, you know, relationships to divorce, to parenting, to uh, men's mental health, all the things that I portray in videos and talk through. And everybody always wants more. You know, they want they want that that blurb in a 15 second video. And then my, you know, my DMs go crazy with, hey, Josh, I've got this scenario going on. Can you help me? Um, and, you know, in a synapse meeting, I was, uh, you know, on there, um, talking with, with Matt and, um, just seemed like the perfect opportunity to kind of transition, you know, financially. Yes. But I'm flooded with people that just want advice on the topic at hand. Um, and if I can do that, um, you know, obviously make a living doing it, but if I, it frees me up to do that time, to be able to give them more than just, you know, a two or three sentence DM back where you can give access. I mean, at an, at my even less quote unquote followers access is important um, for people in this space. Um, So convene is able to give those members, those people access to me that 
I'm not giving on TikTok, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one access, whether it's coaching or whether it's, you know, the podcast I'm doing or whether it's, you know, uh, discussion boards, things like that, that Convene has, it gives them, it gives them access. And uh, that's really what, that's what turns, that's what turned me um, to, to, you know, to obviously to move it over to, to Convene or okay. add it to because everything else isn't going away. Um, it's just another avenue for, you know, I built this quote unquote following um, based on community and based on a family, based on protection and based on, you know, just being together, if you will, positivity, you know, uplifting and lifting each other up. And, you know, can be makes a perfect sense, obviously, to do that, because that's that's what we're about. That's right. And I like that you said that's what we're about because you are certainly part of uh, the Convene family. So you've created a nice brand for yourself. It's a, a lot of no like and trust. You're very authentic. You're borderline a little crazy sometimes when I watch you, but it, but it's but very authentic. <laughs> what you see is what you get for sure. Right, right. People want to have access to someone they know, like and trust who is authentic and, and they want to collaborate with you. So tell us about, you know, the group that you created, uh, just Josh, Joshin, if I could speak and tell us uh, kind of what the plan is uh, there for that. Yeah. So we, uh, so the group, the, sub, the subscription group, uh, 1999 gets you access to just Josh. And then what's that mean? Uh, so just Josh, I'm doing a podcast every Thursday night at seven o'clock. Um, my vision along with, Matt and yours, Eugene, and when Laurel was down as well, was, hey, let's make this this open, um, raw, real, you know, we let's talk barbershop, like guys in the barbershop, you know, there's nothing held back, you know, in the barbershop or for ladies in the salon, like, let's just get real. So I've kind of taken that approach to, you know, it's very interactive, it's done just like this. So Whereas on TikTok live, it's just my face and I see comments. The podcast is just like this in a Zoom setting where, you know, me, obviously you've been on and Matt's been on and um, I've had a couple other guys on. We've done two of those. We're, we're on the screen and we're running through. We're just talking life. We've talked parenting. We've talked um, social media. We've talked how to parent in social media. We've talked, uh, we'll get into dating and we'll get into divorce. We'll get into all those things. Um, but that access for me is great because I don't get that on the other, on the other end, on, on the TikTok side. So um, you get the, you get the podcast once a week. Um, I send a daily, you know, a daily affirmation, um, almost like a tweet. So almost like a tweet every morning, uh, whether that's a, whether that's a scripture or whether that's a positive motivation, something positive and uplifting, everybody gets one of those for me every single day. Um, you know, obviously access to, Hey, we're having an event or I'm going to be this place or I'm going to be here. Um, and then I think we're going to push it through probably the month of February. I'm going to do, um, a two hour, I say two hour, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, it's a big undertaking, but a, a, a two hour live, um, where we can just sit and just, and just chat all the way through. I think that's another, like you said, people want the access mm -hmm. to me. And what I'm learning with the two podcasts that we've done, people want access to you. People want access to Matt. People want access to who's on the podcast, not necessarily the access they have per se to me, but because of the information and because of, again, trusting and, and, and authenticness that we're bringing, they want that. And I think that's super cool in being able to have you know, whoever's on respond to those people to go through that whole thing. So I think that's a huge part of, you know, where we're going to push through um, in the just Josh and um, group. Um, and then as we get our, as I get my hands are uh, around my head around all of that stuff, then open up for, you know, some individual coaching and some group coaching as they see fit. But Right now, I'm having fun with the podcast. The podcast is so fun. You've been on it, right? It's been it's been fun. It's been it's, it's very laid back. It's very you know me. It's very just Josh. And so I and people love that. So, so from here, and we'll open it up to questions after this question. Um, 
you, you've, you've been successful so far driving traffic to uh, your group and it's all new to you. You're just now getting your feet wet. Are you, are you thinking maybe you're going to eventually introduce this to other people that are at your level, if you will, with the same amount, of, if not more uh, followers to, to yeah. show them that there is another way to monetize their brand and their following. Sure. What's your plan there? Sure. Yeah, I think um, you know I've kind of I've kind of teased it out. I mean, I have 113 members, I think, in the community right now, and that's that's just you know saying something on live. Hey, I'm going to move to this new community. I'm not leaving. This is what it's about. If you want to go deeper, if you want to go more, and kind of pushing people over, I haven't really advertised it per se on you know TikTok or on Instagram, but I will. Um, and yeah, the plan is, um, as we start to, you know, make some traction even before then is to reach out to some creators that do what I do. Maybe not, you know, I've got, you know, a friend that does, he does, he's a relationship guy, just relationships, dating relationships, marriage. He's first and foremost on my list. Once I can get my head wrapped around it and, you know, Hey, let's, let's sit and talk to me, talk, talk to you, talk to, talk to Matt. Um, to try to start this, you know, this movement of being positive and helping other people. But, you know, TikTok's, you know, we all, we've all heard the grumblings for years, but TikTok might be going away in the U.S. in 2023. So what, what can we do to move those people over to still get the same content, same authenticity, same message? How can we move them over? You know, Instagram's not going away. Facebook's not going away. TikTok potentially is going away. How do we move it over, continue to monetize, but ultimately how do we continue to help people and give them an outlet for, you know, creativity? Um, and, and obviously we're going to do that here. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a great place as uh, the, the viewers will come to find out if they don't already know for, for the people who are watching this later, there is no algorithm. Um you get a lot of collaboration with Convene. It's a great place to be able to do everything in one place, as, the, as we like to say, the all-in-one platform for you to be able to um, interact and bring good value to that following. So thanks so much for being here, Josh, yeah, and taking it. time out of your day for this for this interview. So Appreciate it. Do we want to open it up, Matt, to some questions, or what are we doing? Yes, yes. So let's open it up for... To some questions, and uh, anybody can open up and ask Josh a question. Uh, first and foremost, I'll ask one because I think I've been on two podcasts with Josh, um, and I want you. And this is what it's like, guys. We're uh, you see me and Josh and Eugene, and last week we had a, di a different gentleman on there. Uh, it was great. Um, but talk a little bit about the after show, and this is kind of the after show what you're seeing here because what happens is everybody that's been watching watching in the background comes out and we stop the we stop the podcast it stops right there i'm not i'm still recording this but the after shows really kind of some of the magic so yeah. Talk about yeah i think that that's um that my two takeaway have been my two takeaways from the last two is how real and how raw and how much people are hurting and that they just want to share so once we get done with that hour long um, podcast, um, open it up, we can see everybody just like this. And it's like, like, hey, what'd you think? Right. What did you think of the pot? Like, we're not recording. What did you think? And the conversations and the uh, just interaction that comes out is is mind blowing. I mean, I think what Matt, Eugene, too, the first night we stayed on for, what, 50 minutes afterwards? Um, just talking through, you know, there were ladies talking about, you know, childhood and ladies talking about like, it was, it honestly was, um, it was like a group, it was almost like a group therapy session. It was, um, it was so cool. Uh, and, um, you know, last week, the same, we had a little technical difficulties because I have bootleg Wi-Fi, as everyone says, um, and it got cut off. Um, <laughs> But it's really a um, it's really a beautiful thing for and it's almost a switch, right? Like it's, you know, we talk and it's like, yeah, we're it, we, we're going to talk through it. And it's just the three of us. And then you open it up and it's um, 
it's beautiful. I don't, I don't even, it's, it's almost, unless you're there, it's so hard to explain what it's, what it's like. It's, um, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. it's cool. I love yeah. it. I was going to say, I, it, uh, I wasn't quite sure if we hit the mark that first uh, podcast as far as what you, your goal was, but you know, the after, um, the after the, the podcast conversation, I'm always struck, and you guys hear me say this all the time, by just how many people are going through something. I don't know, I never lived under a rock. I'm very well aware that people go through a lot of things, but it, it's just so many people. And so I always say, like when I'll when Kate's on, I'll say, Kate, there's such a huge opportunity, or or Laurel, there's such a huge opportunity if you guys were doing something very similar, and then you bring people in a form, whether they're adults or or teens, or you know, or if Laurel's helping people transition and you're getting family members together, that sort of collaboration online with people always just it, it's always eye-opening to me. So I don't know what uh, Laurel or Kate may want to chime in on on that comment, but uh, it's uh, it's interesting. So for me, it's been on my heart a, a long time to do something like that, and I'm curious. I I'm part of your just just Joshin group, so I think just so I can see how the forum looks and and I'm assuming because it's a podcast that are you using a podcast rec like microphone next to you and capturing how does that even because I, I always picture podcasts as just microphones and I'm I'm yeah. a novice to all this yeah <laughs> well we're doing we did it just like this it's just the zoom just like this and I think that and I I say podcast but so my um my art I, my art person, I don't know what she is, my marketing lady that's do, from, that I met on TikTok that's doing all my thumbnails and stuff for me just because she loves what I'm doing. She called it a thrive cast. So Ooh, I like my that. whole thing is like, my word just, just Josh and how to thrive is what it's called. So she made this, the, the first one that's posted. She's like, Josh, this need, let's just call it a thrive cast. And she's got, you know, this outline of me. It's not even me, but sitting there in a chair it's so cool. So the podcast piece, yeah, there's no microphone. It's just like this. And there's okay. no, you know, there's, no, I've got a fake one. I was like, I'll just pull that one out. So it looks official. I'm like, this is different. Like I can, we can do what we want to do with it, but it was so cool to just do this. And uh, like Eugene said, it's, um, it was really, you, you, you split, Hey guys, you know, you in the, you in the podcast, it's like, all right, it, what was it, you know, what's everybody think? How'd you guys think it went? And there's this, like, it felt like an eternity, but it was literally like two seconds. And then all of a sudden you see the mute buttons come off. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you. God. And it, and it just, it just went for 50 minutes and people sharing about what they were going through and Hey, is it possible, Josh, I, this is what I've gone through in front of their, you know, in front of their quote unquote peers. I mean, they're all at this point, other than convene folks, they're all my quote unquote followers from TikTok. So they're acquaintances too virtually, and they're putting their stuff out there for the universe. And the amount of support that they all gave each other and said, Josh, I've gone through this, 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 and this. I'd love to tell my story one night on your on your podcast, or I would love for you to interview me. It was really eye-opening because I don't get that on my end so it was it was like eugene said and matt said it's it was so cool but it's also so sad at the same time that people are going through the amount of stuff they're going through and they just want to they just want to share it they just want to share it no it's so true and i i'm experiencing that in a different in my health community a lot of us coaches are connecting and talking about our story and and people borrow confidence from one another. So you started it with your your podcast or Thrivecast, but then they feel the courage that, well, if he said it, then he's, you know, I, I respect him and I, I don't have to feel so bad about myself. And, you know, I just did an interview today of a young lady who just externally, you see people's front yard and you don't know what's going on in their backyard. And um, it's, it's incredible the things she shared with me that I, she did it for convene to break it down into an experience of 
childhood trauma with her parents and then two different marriages of abuse and almost dying. And, um, but yet you see her now and how she's worked through that. It's just incredible. Awesome. So. And one of the things, um, Kate, now, you know, it's all recorded, right? So it ends up going into an experience. Um, so you, the podcast is right there, Thrivecast, and then a, one question, and then Josh does the lessons learned from it. He does a short video of, and, and, and everybody, this is how me and Todd, uh, Josh went through it. And I said, do it like this. So the first part, experience background, the video, a uh, couple of comments. I had Eugene Brown and Matt Curran on with me tonight. We discussed parent parenting. Then there's a question, and then he comes on and he summarizes it in a couple of minute video. Hey, I want to I want to just talk about what we talked about. These are my takeaways, and then discussion board after it. So you can go in there if you're a member of that uh, of his. Go take it. It's in there. Go go through the process. Even though you weren't there, you can go back and watch it later. And that's the cool thing about it. If if it, if you don't lose power during the middle of, and I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> I've yelled at Comcast and yelled at him. And um, I, think it's my, I think it's my building. Yeah. It was bad. This, so last week's was a phenomenal, you know, podcast. I had a, one of the, my, one of my followers, that's a nurse practitioner. He's in Indiana and has young kids and really talked through the, you know, the quote unquote, the doctor side of things and parenting. It was so cool. And, uh, you know, I, I froze a couple of times in the middle of like, I was getting ready to just say the, you know, the punchline and every, I get back on and everybody's just laughing. Like, what did, what did you say? You, you froze. And then as it was saving afterwards, my whole, my whole system just shut down. So I did a, you know, a 10 minute recap on, um, just the, so last week it's not, it's not there, but it was, a, it, it was, was good. good. It was very good. The interaction was, again, it was great. It was great. I think I've had that happen so many times. Yeah. It's, and, and that's why I said, like, you know, but you're still doing, like, like you said, you did a 10 minute recap. And I think that's important because at least we're doing what we can. And like Matt and I just recorded a podcast the other day. And what happened, Matt, the trash guy comes in yeah. and, and that ended up being in the podcast. But I was like, you know what, we're just going to keep going with this because this is the reality of life and not everything's perfect. And, <laughs> you know, like this trash guy comes in and he could care less that I'm recording a podcast. And it was just kind of funny, though. We joked about it. Um, but I, I do um, something that you guys were talking about in the sharing your stories. And I just want to say this because it's one thing that Convene gave me. It gave me the opportunity and um, I will say it gave me the ability to start working through my traumas to where I could share my story um, because you guys kind of believed in me and saw things in me that I wasn't seeing. And so if anything, I appreciate this, not just the platform, but everybody here for that um, because it did give me that um, motivation to really work through the trauma. And now I'm sharing things on a different level and people are like, I didn't even know that. And I was like, I know because I wasn't ready to share. <laughs> So I think it's just, you know, we just got to keep going with it and everybody's doing great stuff. And I hope that the people who are on here are listening and maybe sparking some ideas and just seeing what they can do on here, you know, when we collaborate and come together. Jody, what I always say is convenes a perfect place to save space for people. And you, you're giving them a, your story in little bits and pieces and when they're ready, it's not, they're not forced to come on and share and take that experience, but when they're ready, it's, it's organized, it's housed there for them. And you're just holding space. Um, and I always, I'm, I'm very unfocused. I know a lot of my fellow ADHD people on here. So when you're in a social world and social media land, and you're getting pings and dings and all the things, notifications, it's so distracting. So convene is a space to tune out the noise. And it's, it's like you're trying to, you're like, you're not that ADHD kid in the classroom with all the kids talking, you can focus. And so I love that. Yeah, that's so true. I know for me, and I tell people this all the time, like I don't have my notifications on for the social media platforms. It would drive me insane and it has, um, but I do have my notifications on for convene. And I just tell people, I'm like, Hey, this is where I'm going to be. If you want to come, if you want to come talk to me, come to my community, it's free. And, and come see what the convene platform is all about because you have, you know, everybody else that's on here too. Um, but yeah, those, those dings will drive you insane <laughs> if you're not careful. 
I think I think for me the the thing that I took away Thursday, and it's and I think a lot of people are like, well, I just want to hear you know, you're not gonna just gonna hear me talk, and I think that's you know, one of the things I took away from you know Dustin the other night is being we talked about you know my stuff that I have going on with my daughter at the moment and things like that is you know is being present, and you know one of the things that my kids said was you know dad's always on his phone, and Jody just said it with the notifications and the dings and all that stuff. Is I, I left out of there out of, you know, like pull it back. I left out of my own podcast thinking I need to look at myself and not something that I said. Um, it's really been a, um, for me, it's been an eye opening weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of just not even having my phone and just not even, you know, went to my son's basketball game. And I told him, I said, do you notice anything about your game on Saturday? I want to see if he noticed it, right? Like we all see our kids are like, oh yeah, he's always on his phone or he's always got a snack or he's always got a drink, like whatever it is. He's like, I don't think you looked at your phone during the game. I'm like, my phone was in the car. So you want to talk about somebody that lives on social media and has the dings and all that stuff. I left my car. I left my car. I left my phone in the car. It was an hour and a half. I got out. Like I thought out my, I told my buddy Nate, he goes, were you itching? Like scratching? Like, were you like going through, going through withdrawals? I'm like, no, it was so nice that my watch wasn't going off. And my watch didn't tell me to stand up. Cause I guess I was sitting too long, but I left my own podcast with something that I needed to work on because of something somebody else said. It was a, it was, it was a crazy, not a crazy thing. It's a great thing for me. So learning something, no matter who's there, I think is, is huge too. Yeah. Who else? Who else has something to say? Anybody else? Question to ask? Anything so? I was just going to say real quick, like just to go off of what Josh was just talking about, like we were talking about, we were at the chiropractor today and ended up having a full blown discussion over phones and cell phones and kids and them having their cell phone. And it was funny because our daughter was in there and she didn't like any of it, but you know, it's, it, it is interesting. And, and I do tell people this all the time. I coach more for me sometimes, I think, and, and I'm very authentic about that. And it reminds me that I need to be doing what, you know, I'm coaching other people on. And so I think sometimes that's why I keep going with it because it's really helping me too. You know, I'm helping other people, but it's helping me too. Yeah. So I'll close this out and then we'll stop recording. Uh, but that's part of the magic of this platform, right? Is that it's bringing people together in different ways. And, and uh, when you're talking about things that Josh is doing in the side of his community, now he's taking it from TikTok and he's bringing it into that, that more intimate space. And what he talked about is that you know people want to be seen, heard, and validated, right? They want to be a part of it, and that's what's happening. Uh, it, it's no different. It's the same format, you know. It's what we're doing is what Josh is doing. What we do all the time, kind of. It's the same format. It, it's just that it, today it was Eugene and it was Josh. Other ones that we've done before, it's just me and somebody. Uh, or if what we've done is in the last one, it was me and. Um, What's his name again? Uh, uh, what's the guy's oh, name? Oh, Dustin. Dustin and Josh. And then the first one was me, Eugene, and, and Josh. So you can do it in any format, but the key thing is then bringing people in and, and having that interaction on the backside of it. You know, cut it up, talk about it, have your guest on, whoever your guest is, and then allow your people to have access because they want to be a part of it. That's what this is special. That, that's what makes it different. Especially they want to be heard. Right. They want to be you know, seen, heard and validated. And what you're doing during that podcast or during that time is you're building trust. You know, they know they come off of that and they're still asking Josh, but they're asking me questions as a counselor. They were asking Dustin questions as the, um, you know, as the uh, nurse practitioner and, and all that because he's a pediatric guy. So um, and then asking Eugene uh, the week before. So and guess what? From that, people now want to start learning about Convene. And I'm supposed to have a meeting with a lady named Amy. Well, that's somebody who was part of it. So there's business building opportunities in on the backside because there's a lot of people that do uh, special things. So, uh, and now we're showing them how they can do it inside the platform. And inside of that, for Josh, he will be able to monetize that in the long run because they'll go out and do their own thing within other communities like uniquely you or yours because that's where this lady would belong you know so we're building each other up in the process 
So Josh, I love it. Um, I hate I'm not going to be on it this week, but you said you're going to talk about dating. And I don't think my wife would like if I was on there talking about dating. I might make her a little mad. <laughs> Although we could talk about, yeah, but we could, like you said earlier, we could talk about, you know, guys trying to date my daughter and that doesn't go over very well either. So, you know, lots of good things. You're doing we'll great things. We'll see yeah. what we get into. That's right. Well, you're doing great things. And I appreciate uh, that you're here. Um, and just one of the next ones coming up, we have Laurel that we're going to be talking to in two weeks. So. Make sure everybody comes back on and hears that one as well. All right, I'm going to stop recording and we will go from there.